between the exercises? Oh yeah. Good. Well, I'm uh, trying to decide what I'm going to do. I am going to do a couple things. Let me get something out of my bag here. Are you all in early sleep? No. no. You don't have to drive on. Sorry, I'm going to start off with something that I use. And this is such a great close-up bag. I have to use it. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Um, this is something that I use a lot. And it may seem very transparent to a lot of people. And if it is, use it. <laughs> okay? Because I'm not going to show you how it works, but I am going to tell you that when it is performed correctly and at the right time, it's one of my favorite things in the world. Okay? So, as you know, for many years I did readings, and I would always carry this small bag with me. Black and mysterious. Okay, okay so let me see if I can find somebody. That, the lady standing in the back, would you mind helping? Uh, sure. Come on up. So, this is a little experiment. You know, every once in a while when you do readings, and uh, <clears throat> it isn't for a skeptical audience. And your name is? Melissa. Nice to meet you, Melissa. I'm Mark. So do you believe in ESP? Uh, sometimes. Good, and this will work. Have a seat. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you all see? If you can't see, then come around the table, because this, I wasn't sure whether it was going to be a close-up thing or whether it was going to be a stage thing. So I invite you to come up to the table right now. So if you could just stand here, or if you can see from where you're sitting, that's fine too. So what I have here, you know, I, I spoke about this for a little bit yesterday, about predictions. You know, when you go and see a psychic, they will make a prediction, but you don't really know what's going to happen. It could be two years, they say it's two years away, it's two, three years away. There's no one really around to check up on the psychic, so you just have to trust them. The real crux of the issue with a psychic is could they predict something that's going to happen, say, in the next three or four minutes? So if I'm sitting with somebody and they're sitting like this, body language tells me they're skeptical and they're not going to buy into anything. So I say to them, I am now going to show you how I can predict the future with a total stranger who didn't plan anything, right? Okay, so here we go. This is called Written in Stone, and it's in one of my books. In this little red bag is my prediction for what's going to happen in about six minutes. So would you go ahead and hold on to that, put it somewhere I can't possibly get there. Good. All right. So what I have are five stones. One, two, three, four. These are the stones that I use, and if you'll note, Melissa, they're all quite different, aren't they? Yes. That's very important. No two stones are alike. Uh, now, here's where the fun part comes in. I'm working with a certain side of your mind, okay? So with the skeptics crowd, this is always very interesting because skeptics tend to be rational thinkers, okay? And they can jump ahead sometimes, fast thinking. We talked about that yesterday. So, the intellectual mind will make choices. For example, I'm not sure, but just by looking down at these five stones, you, you, you might have already decided which one you like, right? Don't, don't say what it is, but just... Sure, yes. You did? Yeah. Okay, so that is the intellectual mind. That is the mind that makes rational decisions. But what I'm going to try and ac access with this experiment is the intuitive mind. This is the mind we don't have any control over. The cosmos is going to take control for the next few minutes. Fair enough? Okay. All right. So I'm going to hold this little bag here, and I'm going to put these out in front of you like this. And you're going to just do whatever you feel. Okay? Don't overthink it, because again, you don't have to do anything. The universe is going to take control. Okay? So I'm going to hold this bag here. Melissa, I want you to slide three stones right over here towards the corner right in front of you. Okay. Very good. Give her a round of applause. Okay, 
Okay, now Melissa, I don't want you to again think about it at all for a moment. I want you to pick up one stone in each hand. Simple, right? Now I'm going to put my hand out like this, and I'm going to ask you, put one of the stones in my hand. Just again. So, fair enough. I think that's pretty fair. If the stone that she has in the little bag, which you can take out with, <coughs> were to match the one that's in your hand, that would prove that I predicted the future about six minutes ago. So if you would put the, put the one stone there, I won't get near it. This one? Yeah. That's the one you're left with. Okay. And go ahead and undo the bag, and you'll feel there is a little stone in there, right? Yes. And it is? Oh. So this is a very effective way to persuade somebody who may be really skeptical. And that's been my job for a long time. So, you know. I'm a skeptic, but I also like to entertain. So anyway, that's, that's called written in stone. Now, I think what I'm going to try and do is uh, and give her a round of applause. <laughs> So obviously magicians use a lot of different cards, but the cards that I really like to use are ESP cards, okay? I don't know if you've ever seen these before, so I'm going to try a little something here. Um, let's just put these, I don't need them anymore. Changing my mind as I go. So these are ESP cards. And these are the real deal. Nowadays, there are all these tricky bats, you know, honeys and rabbits on the back. But you know, this is, these are the Ryan ESP cards used by Dr. Ryan in his experiments with ESP. This is the real thing. It's really hard to get these. But when I was younger, I decided to buy as many packets as I could get because I knew they were going to eventually run out. So this is the real deal. You've probably seen or heard of them. Um, there's 25 cards, five of each symbol, okay? So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with them, I will show you the symbols. There's the square, there's the plus symbol, there is the circle, there is the star, and then certainly my favorite, the wavy lines. Well, I call this one fake. <laughs> So they are repeated. So I'm going to mix them up a little bit, try not to drop them on the floor. And I'm going to ask somebody to come up and help me, and we're going to try and do a little test. Now, if you do a run of 1 to 25 cards, if you get five right, that's usually pretty good. You get one right, not so good. So that's how they would test, you know. Uh, but I'm going to try and do something that uses concentration on the part of somebody. And I need, do you have an inside shirt pocket, sir? I do. Would you mind that? <laughs> Could you use one more little mix here? So are you familiar with these cards? Uh, the shapes, yes. Good, very good. So, so um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you to take the top card, put it in your inside shirt pocket with the face towards you. Don't look at it. Fair enough. Take the next card, <clears throat> put it in your right hand pocket, pants pocket, but don't look at it. Right hand. Yeah. And the last one, put it in your left hand pants pocket. Okay, you got it? Good. Very good. I'm going to just give these a little mix. And I'm going to place these into my pocket now. Now here comes the fun part. This is called seeing with the fingertips. Okay, this was put forward by a lot of parapsychologists a long time ago that you can, safe crackers do this. They're able to sensitize their fingertips. They use sandpaper. I didn't do that today because I'm gonna work with this gentleman's mind, okay? So, what we're gonna try is, is to try and get some psychic matching because that's what is considered powerful, okay? So, you get to make the random choices as we go, all right? Um, for example, you've got three places. Which would you like to go for first? Your shirt pocket, your right, or your left pocket? Shirt pocket. Shirt pocket. All right, I want you to take the card out 
and hold it, but don't look at it yet. Okay. All right, because I'm, I'm I'm feeling a little bit of energy in here. You know, just to start out. Just to start out, go ahead and show me show me that. That's it. You can look at it and show it to me. There you go. First time. That's good. So we'll just set that down here. So now it gets a little more interesting. Which pocket this time, right or left? Left. Left pocket? You sure? Okay. So this time, take it out. <sighs> Don't show it to me. You look at it, but only you. Okay? And I will turn over here for a second while you look at it. Have you got it? I do. Left hand pocket. Okay, I'm going to hold this right here and you hold yours face down and on the count of three, we'll show you what happens. One, two, three. Wow. So already I should be hired for the next America's Got Talent. Don't you agree? Right, right. All right, for the last card, let's try something at double blind. And I learned this from Ray. Double blind this time. You take all the rest of the cards, mix them up, okay? Mix them any way you want so that neither of us, neither of us will know. Is it neither or neither? <laughs> neither. 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 So they're now mixed, right? Yes. All right, so this time take that last card. I'm going to put these back in my pocket. I am going to find one. I want you to take the last one out. Don't look at it. Don't look at it yet. Okay, because now I don't know. You don't know, right? Okay, so let's try and bring them out towards the audience like this. And on the count of three. One, two, three. Well, one in five actually, or what they are. But, um, I could, I could try one more. Please. Please. Yeah. All right. This is one of my favorites because this is thought reading at its finest. Okay, all right. I like to think it is. I, it doesn't always work, but when it does, it's pretty, pretty nice. And I, I feel like you're the right group. You're going to be with me because I know how you feel about celebrities, okay? You, we love celebrities. They have a certain mystical prominence in our life. Like, I don't know how many you remember, but uh, do you remember TV Guy and Elvis? Yeah. Elvis has this mythological thing going where people say he's still alive and, and he, he's like on more covers of TV Guy than any other celebrity. I don't know if you knew that, but Elvis had a lot of things going on that we can only guess at really happen, okay? So the thing with the TV guy, there are thousands of television programs in here. And if you were to break it down to images, millions. If we were to break it down to, I don't know, we can't. It's on, there is an, in, uh, 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 it's not an infinite amount of choices. I'm seeing yawning, so I gotta work. Uh, let's see. But the point is, there's a lot of lot of listings. So let me let me find somebody who has their glasses on, so we don't have to stop for that. Who wants to help you? Who's a, who's a TV, you know, movie fan, celebrity? What are the chances in a skeptic crowd? Uh, how about this gentleman in the blue shirt who's looking the other way? Would you mind coming up, sir? <laughs> so this. I've, I've studied these. They're, they're almost like a little time machine. Back then, you could look up a certain time on a certain day, and exactly that thing would be there on your TV. Amazing. So have a look through that. So, the idea, I want you to make sure all the pages are different. You know, not, they're not all alike or any trick like that. Look pretty good? Yep. So and your name is? Shannon. I'm sorry? Shannon. Shannon? No, uh, Shannon. Shannon, OK. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get a specific page, and Shannon's going to help me to try and find that. And he gets to make all the choices about what's going to happen in the next few minutes. So here we go. Shannon. So as I ripple through, you just say stop. Stop. Looks good. We don't want a page that has a lot of advertisements on it or pictures. We want the printed page, okay? So I'm going to now take this out. This is the hardest part is removing the page without destroying it. All right, we have a page of hundreds of listings. Well, maybe not, a couple dozen anyway. <clears throat> so you're gonna make the next choice. I'm gonna pull this in half, and let's separate ourselves a little bit, give it a little stage presence, you know. I'm gonna fold this in half like this, and what I'm gonna do is ask you, after I tear it in half, which half do you want me to save and which half do you want me to get rid of? This would be the right, this would be the left. Which do you want to use? Save your left. You want to use the left? So I may destroy the right. Fair enough, everybody? The right is destroyed, you're now using the left. I'm going to fold the left hand piece in half. And then you do the same thing again. You can change your mind, you can go with something entirely different. It's up to you. Here we go. Which one do you want to use? Which one do you want to get rid of? Uh, get rid of the um, your right. Get rid of this one. You sure? Yep. Okay. Wait. See what's happening here? No. <laughs> what we're doing is he's making decisions, random decisions, because we didn't plan anything, to try and get to a certain place in the TV guide that there's no way in the world I could know. And believe me, there isn't. So, here we're going to do it one more time. I'm going to tear this down the middle. Bear with us, lady in the back. Which one this time do I keep? Which one do I get rid of? Get rid of the right. Get rid of the right again. Very consistent. This is a very pragmatic person. He has a decision. He stays with it. This is really good. Hold your hand out flat like this. I'm going to put this piece of paper on your hand. Put your other hand on top of it. And now, one more decision. Do you want to use it the way it is, or do you want to turn it over? Okay, all right, so now, did you have something you're holding on to that you want to set down? There you go. All right, so, so now what you're going to do is you're going to get it, turn it around so that you can look down at it, and you can read left to right the print that's on that little tiny piece of paper, okay? Yep. So don't choose anything because we're going to work together at this point. It's very important we do work together, all right? So... <laughs> I want you to let your mind kind of go in a spiral pattern towards the center of that piece of paper, okay? Can you look down at it and begin that? Okay. <clears throat> okay, already I'm getting, uh, and by the way, don't, don't choose something like Brandon Stimpy or News or something like that. I want something big with some meat on it. Like, are, are, you, is there, are you looking down at a movie listing? Yes. You are? Good, good, good. good. So, so read that over. Um, movie listing. First thing I'm getting uh, is a a beautiful woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But a lot of people are thinking big deal. There's a lot of beautiful women. So, so let me ask you this: Have you seen this movie? Yes. Okay, don't say it. But you've, you've seen it. Okay. So now we don't even need the piece of paper. Roll it up into a little tiny ball. I'm going to take the little ball out for me, and I'll put it in my pocket like this. So now, pure from the mind. Beautiful woman. She's covered in paint. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's not Lucille Ball. I'm not getting a funny feeling. It's gold paint. Were you looking at the listing for the film Goldfinger? I was. Mm -hmm. 